Are you ready, Mike? Uh, I, I, I think I am slightly more ready than you. Okay. But let's try. All right. Here we go. Hello, sports fans. Halfback, pass to center, back to wing, back to center, center holds it, holds it, holds it. I gotta tell you, folks, it looks like we've got a very exciting World Series on our hands. Hardly focused. Sports, 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 sports. Man, I have not played this bit in a long, long, long time. I, I was hoping you would, and I was like, I, I don't even know if it's still in his computer. I had to actually update this drop because it still had the uh, Talk Radio Meltdown tag on it. That's how, long it's been. <laughs> That's how long it's been since we've done a dedicated sports segment. But here we are to talk about sports because the New England Patriots kicking everybody's ass, kicking all the asses. Uh, number one in the uh, AFC right now. Ooh, somebody knows the stat line right now. Uh, now, are they number one everywhere or is it just the AFC? Uh, NFL standings overall, I do believe in the AFC, they are uh, the first. However, in the NFC, they are not. Okay. Not that it matters right now, but uh, the NFC has the Cardinals at 10 and 2. So uh, Patriots are only at 9 and 4. Uh, well, it's it's going to have to start mattering soon because, I mean, it's December. I mean, there's only what, like, we're, we're only like a month and a half away from the end of the season. True. Uh, let's see. We've got a uh, – there's – there's. I think this might be the last week of uh, bye weeks, so everybody else is going to be catching up to – if they're, sometimes their record is one lower than the other. But uh, right now – Chiefs, Ravens, and Titans are all eight and four. Patriots are nine and four. So, Patriots are going to their bye week this week. They've the other teams already had their bye week. So, the other three teams may all win, but for the meantime, at least until Sunday, Pats have the winningest percentage in the AFC. Ah, there's that word, winningest. Yep. Uh, well, last night New England Patriots played the Buffalo uh, Bills. 14-10. That is the uh that was the final score. Man, Patriots what is the seventh consecutive the seventh consecutive win. Yes, they season. are on a win streak of seven right now. And I think this one of the last three to four games was the closest of the ones that they've played. Because the last I'd say two to three. They were just obliterating. Like there was, there was no, there was no contest. Yes, the uh, the closest game recently was the uh, October thirty first, uh, Patriots versus Chargers, twenty seven twenty four. And uh, I, I will say, I'll, I'll preface this by saying, I uh, was asleep and woke up uh, about halfway through the third. Uh, but uh, I'm, you know, I think that was probably the best time to jump in and watch because the fourth quarter was. Uh, you know, I don't know if I want to sound like a total casual simpleton fan here by saying you was, are going to sound like a total casual simpleton fan and you can't get around it. So just say it a wee bit of a nail biter because the uh, the bills really seemed like they were uh, there was a period of time where it seemed like the bills had it and they had a chance. And then every time the possession turned over, then the Pats were just they were fucking off during the fourth. <laughs> because then they uh, yeah. have the opportunity and then they were it just seemed really sloppy every every single time during the the uh the fourth uh quarter they just uh they'd have possession and it was just racking it up and it immediately go back to the bills uh well uh i mean honestly as long as the bills don't score it doesn't matter right yeah so a couple of things to keep in mind uh, about this game last night is that it was Really, really freaking windy. Uh, yeah, um, it, I wasn't aware of the wind at the game. However, I was aware of the wind at my house. Yep. And I was worried. It was trash day. Oh, Jesus. Uh, I was worried <laughs> that the trash barrel would not make it back to my house. Um, and I'm like, I I'm putting it out there tonight because they pick it up at like 5.30 in the goddamn morning. But I'm, I'm pleasantly, apparently I have enough trash that it weighed it down enough. Yeah. The recycling barrel, however, uh, that got 
uh, Auntie M'd right into the corner of, of the uh, fencing. So uh, that luckily was able to stay in the yard because of the direction of the wind. Otherwise, it would have probably gone to the center of town. Is it salvageable? Oh, it's fine. It's plastic. Okay. I always try to. I always try to weigh mine down. I've got uh, a lot of. I got enough garbage now in my garage. That I've got like you know old like ceramic tiles and and things like that that I can just dump in the bin. And yeah, uh, well, that's 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 not for the recycling stuff. That's the trash stuff. I have. A, I clearly have enough heavy trash. Yeah. Well, uh, the first, uh, the first touchdown of the game. Here we go. Damian Harris, sixty-four yard touchdown. Listen to this in there on third and five pitch for Harris has the first down and breaks it is gone Damian Harris threw everyone up the middle for the touchdown 64 yards on the score I kind of wish I was awake for that part uh yeah that was exciting yep. um that was uh that was a run correct mm-hmm. oh yeah all right yep uh because clearly that's apparently what was going on uh, Mac Jones, let's, let's pivot real quick. Mac Jones, are yes. we, are we encasing him in carbonite? Uh, a little, a little bit, a little bit. Okay. I mean, he is technically a rookie. So the, the less you can fuck him up, the better. Okay. It, it, it just, it seems like, so with this game yesterday, he was, he, he had three passes and it seems like he was only allowed three passes like they were they were being very meticulous in what they were doing with him yes two completions three passes 19 total yards of uh passing offense you want to hear some trivia (laughs) yep what is it (laughs) (laughs) brace yourselves (laughs) your boy taking notes here according to boston.com mac jones uh finished two for three for 19 yards and becoming the nfl's third quarterback to win nine games in his rookie season Oh, I thought I didn't realize you were going to go with that angle for the uh, stat line. Okay. Yeah. Can you name the uh, other two? Um, uh, the other two QBs. Nine um, games in the rookie season. Yeah. Um, is it is it Tom Brady? Nope. Uh, ooh. Um, was was his rookie season when Matt Castle took over for the Brady? Uh, I think it was his second season, right? So he doesn't count. Um, no, you're asking too much of me there. Yeah, I know. Sorry there, buddy. Uh, rooks, 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 rookie, 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 rookie. Uh, wouldn't it be blood. So was it? Uh, I'd say l- let's look at the, within the last twenty years. Drew Brees. Nope. I'll tell you right now. Uh, ben Roethlisberger. Oh, Rebelsberger. Okay. And uh, Dak Prescott. Oh, good old Dak. All right. No. Uh, Mac Jones, according to Boston.com, Mac Jones also joined uh, Roethlisberger and Prescott in becoming the NFL's third rookie QB to win his first six road starts. Oh, yes. Yes, they are perfect on the road. Still have a losing record at home. (laughs) You would think Buffalo would be able to handle themselves in the environment that they were in last night, especially for Buffalo it being a home game. I I think... I think it's it's what it is. It is wind. Every you can handle the cold. Football players generally can handle the cold, right? It's it's a known factor. Okay, it's cold. It's fucking cold. My balls are inside. But wind, like if you're trying to if you're a quarterback and you're trying trying to throw something into the wind, and it was what fifty mile an hour gusts. Yeah. Yeah, no, not happening. Enough to drop the wind chill down to about 20 degrees. Uh, yeah, yeah. That, uh, uh, please don't hit me. I, it's going to sting worse than the actual hit. <laughs> now, yeah. is it uh, Josh Allen making the kicks for the Bills? Uh, no, Josh Allen is the uh, quarterback. He's their QB. Okay. Uh, yeah. Who's making, Who who's the uh, kicker for the, for the uh, Bills? The Bills kicker. Oh, uh, I'm not scared. Uh, See, this is where my my sports knowledge really uh, picks uh, I up. I believe it's is it Tyler Bass. Okay, watching that because there were, especially in the latter half of the game, a few field goal attempts that, again, you would think they were in their element that they knew what they were doing, given the weather conditions. Watching the kick and watching the ball, just it like. We're going, 
we're going, we're going, and now we're just going to veer off to the right. It, it's like, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm going to equate this to playing golf in Grand Theft Auto V, where they show you the little indicator where you know the direction of the wind. At least someone has to like come out and be like, hey, the, the wind is very obviously blowing in this direction. So if you're gonna if you're gonna try to uh, huck an object, go in the opposite direction of the wind, because the wind is going to carry that object at some point. Now, now keep in mind th- they're showing if you take a quick search. Um, apparently, it's it's titled "The Wind Is Destroying Kickers' Souls in Pregame Warmups," uh, and it's from it's a YouTube from one day ago, and you can see the flags. There's flags that are on top of uh, the uprights. And uh, they are fluttering like they're having a seizure. And the kickers are, both kickers are on the same side of the field, trying to kick into the wind, just trying to get a feel for it. And it's like somebody put a weight on one side of the ball and it's just going like a wobbly top. Yeah. It's kind of sad. These guys are like, I'm getting paid millions of dollars to kick consistently. And I'm, 25 yards away where a high school kicker shouldn't have a problem. And I'm not sure if I'm going to make this field goal. They're kicking to the, to the left. And at, at some point it's getting close and it just goes, it like stops on a dime and turns to the right. So I can understand that that amount of wind right there, if you're a quarterback, you're not having a good day. This is why, again, I visualized the little the little wind indicator and the little yeah. golf mini game in Grand Theft yeah. Auto Five because that 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 that's what taught me. Hey, hit ball in opposite direction, wind will carry it. Yeah, I mean the kickers have what a twenty foot wide, you know, goal post right there, right? As opposed to a uh, the hands of a wide receiver, you know, a couple feet across. And we're not talking like they missed by an inch. It was significant misses. Oh yeah, you're, yeah. I mean, it, it's any time that you're talking about a Bills kicker missing anyway, it's always funny just because wide right, um, and the 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 malady of Bills and kicking. But I mean, this this definitely was probably not his fault. Yeah. Uh, the Boston.com article here, and in my uh, attempts at sounding like I know what I'm talking about, I could have just looked at the thing I highlighted here. It would have answered my earlier question about who the <laughs> kicker is on the Bills. Uh, the Bills blew several scoring chances by managing a touchdown and field goal on four trips inside the Patriots 20. That included Tyler Bass missing a 34-yard attempt wide right into the wind midway through the fourth quarter. That is the wide one right. I saw. Wide that right. Is, yeah, that, that, <laughs> that is uh, it, not, not like necessarily a Hail Mary, but you can tell at that point, like, there's no way if they if they if they hit that, I think it would have brought them within one point of winning. But yes, but it was like, hey, we have no other options because it was, that, it was that's obviously, what I was looking at. Yeah. I was like, I saw the game and I was like, oh, well, you know what? They could kick it You know, normal a normal game. They would probably play safe, kick it and then, you know, try to hold and, and get another kick in. Right. From a long distance. But they're saying that anything more than a 30 yard kick is just a, a, a literally a crap shoot. Yeah, it was fourth and whatever. At that point, there was, yeah, you, you either you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. So, um, so there's that. And then, uh, we, we go into the, everybody's favorite, the post game conferences, <laughs> the most expressive man on the planet, Bill Belichick. Now I actually don't have any audio of Belichick because because you don't ever have any audio of Bill Bel- I'll be honest you could pull any previous clip of Bill Belichick play it and say this is from this game's press conference and you would not have anybody doubting you no we are you oh, look uh we're just looking uh looking forward to uh you know getting into ready for next week uh to buy uh, oh, this week's a bye week so it'd be a, you'd have to find you know last year's but, yeah uh you know it, you know, we're looking forward to next week's game, and uh, that's what we're looking for. Look, we just got to make sure that we uh, prepare and uh, get ready for next week. All right, D- thanks, guys. It, in the case of last <laughs> night, in the case of last night, it was just, yeah, it was, uh, it was windy. It's, uh, <laughs> you know, it's cold, but, you know, we uh, we wore jackets. And it played well. So anyway, it's, I mean, it's 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 kind of like Marshawn Lynch when he was uh, 
at his press conference at the Super Bowl back in the days. I'm just here, so I won't get fined. <laughs> uh, hey, what do you think about this week? I'm just here, so I won't get fined. I'm just here, so I won't get fined. Now, Bill's like, I can't do that every week for, for like 10 years straight. I'm going to get in trouble for that. So he's like, look, I'm just giving him the most basic answers with no emotion. Uh, it, was, it was windy. Uh, yeah. It's cold. We put coats on. And we're going to look to next week's game. All right. Bye. Well, uh, Sean McDermott, who is the uh, coach of the Bills, apparently had a hissy fit. Not too happy. I mean, there were there was a lot of hissy fits that were happening during the postgame conferences. Here's uh, Sean McDermott talking about Bill Belichick after their uh, their loss last night. Let's not give more credit than we need to give credit to Bill Belichick in this one. It was um, whether it's Bill or anybody else, they beat us, right? But you sit here and you tell me when they start with the average starting, when we start with the average starting field position of the 40 yard line and he starts with the 23 yard line, kind of rounding up in both cases, and we were one for four in the red zone and they're 0 for one in the red zone, you give me that ahead of time, I'm saying I like my chances. I like my chances. So it's not, I don't think, with all due respect, it's not a Bill Belichick type thing. It's what are you doing with the opportunities you got? What are you doing with the opportunities you got? We turn the ball over at the plus 30 some yard line. Sloppy football. Uh, yes, but you were given better field position, and Bill Belichick's defense stopped you more. So wouldn't that be all on Bill Belichick? Give all the credit to Bill Belichick. I'm just saying. Yeah, give it all to Bill Belichick. Again, going. He, he gave you the field position. He's like, I don't care. I will stop you. Going back to what I said about Mac Jones and encasing that kid in carbonite, Belichick had a plan for him. Yeah, he was like, don't get him cold. Hand the ball <laughs> off. The guy, the guy literally has lived his entire football career in the South. This is his first year in, the, in cold weather. He's like, I don't like this. It's cold. I was like, well, get your northern blood ready because, buddy, it's going to be fucking freezing soon. I, I will say McDermott, not wrong about sloppy football. I mentioned it a few minutes ago, just that last quarter where... Oh, my God, yeah. Every single time Pats had possession, and they were just like, oh, we're fourth down already? And we're turning back to the Bills? Okay, wow, that was quick. Uh, yeah, I mean the the Bills had what they, they were they were driving with a chance to score. I think they were actually in the red zone with two minutes left, and they they couldn't convert. Yeah. Like guys, literally, you're, you're you've got less than than twenty yards to go, and you get bupkis. No wonder why you lost. Yeah, that's uh, when I said that it was a bit of a nail biter of a game. My simpleton take there. My simpleton hot take. That's what we should call the segment. Jack's simpleton hot takes. <laughs> so, or, or hot takes with simpleton Magoo. Any time. No, yeah. Okay. I'm not a smart man, but I know what sport is. <laughs> Patriots possession is very brief. They give it back to the Bills. Their, their uh, offensive plays at that point. Impressive enough because they were they were seemingly doing fine they just couldn't hit that last little bit to get them to score again or get them within scoring position because then again you have Tyler Bass trying to uh do field goal attempts and and failing miserably look if you made it earlier they could have gotten down to that you know the 10 yard line and tried that fourth down kick and and gone up by it you know a point but they didn't well it wasn't just so. Mc, it wasn't just McDermott who was uh, upset and on edge because yeah, frustrating loss. You lost by four points. Um, even if those field goal attempts would have brought you within one, <laughs> can you imagine if they 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 actually were successful on that last attempt, and then they lost by one point? <laughs> I'd rather lose by uh, four points at that point. Um, I'm sure they were checking the the Vegas line to see if they needed to cover the spread. Oh, if you really wanted to see some uh, good stuff, too, just watching uh, both uh, McDermott and Belichick just losing their collective minds in, the, like, the last five minutes of the game. Because I think they ended up running the clock down, or they they added, like, one sec. They had, like, tw the, the, the 20 seconds for the, you know, the initial play, and then they added one second to the clock so they could just let it run down. Hey, you know what? One second matters. Uh, so McDermott, not the only one upset, uh, Jerry Sullivan, who's old <laughs> asking questions, uh, uh, talking with Micah Hyde, 
Jordan Poyer. Here's the audio. Uh, with with um, you, you'll hear Poyer giving an answer to Jerry Sullivan, but it's really Micah Hyde, uh, really, really speaking out against him. And I, I'm a particular fan of Sullivan's response. Here we go. Over 40 years since the season has won a game running a few times in the game, passing a few times. Is that embarrassing? Uh, just if you couldn't hear that, that's uh, Sullivan asking if they find it embarrassing to have lost to a team that ran the ball more than 40 times. <laughs> oh, that's a dick question, and I love it. And here's the response. I mean, what kind Boy, of question? What are we doing, bro? What kind of question is that? It's a question. The nation's going to be criticizing you about calling it so I'm asking... I mean, so that's I mean, keep that, keep uh, seven yeah. points. Yeah, we're 14, uh, 14, 14, to, 14, 14 to 10. Is that the final score? We made stops when we had to. They had one big run. I mean, they got good backs. They, yeah, all right. Um, they kept coming back to a couple of runs. I mean, I don't know how you want us to answer that question. I come here every single week and I answer your questions truthfully, honestly. I appreciate you guys. Don't do that. Don't do that. In my day, players answer that kind of question. In my day. <laughs> Back in my day. <laughs> my day players answer that kind of question. That's what Sully said. So then he goes on Twitter uh, and takes further digs at Hyde. He says on Twitter, and this is coming from Boston.com, Micah Hyde asks, acts like he's doing the media a favor by coming out and answering questions after the games. That's the problem with the current access during COVID. The media can't be in the locker room asking tough questions. Most players get to hide while quote unquote leaders speak for the team. Ooh, man, they're just putting shots across the bow. I don't know. I mean, I'm a dick by nature. It wasn't necessarily a bad question. I think maybe the intonation of uh, how you feel embarrassed. Do you feel like a bitch? I think that's that's really what the uh, the, the intent was. Do you feel like a bitch? Because <laughs> you got fucked like a bitch. You know, like, I think that's that maybe why that may be the, uh, the, the undertone of the back and forth right there. Because mm-hmm. hey, uh, you uh, you got you got run on like forty times, and this is a league that really tries to get people to pass and not run. So how do you feel? Feel like a loser? So you guys suck. Comment. <laughs> uh, I I I said this. I'm going back to what I said earlier. If 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 it was a one point difference, I think it would have been a much uh, larger and more sensitive chord that would have been struck. I, th- I think Belichick would have preferred a one point win just to be like, <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> we've, been, we've been winning by too much lately. <laughs> <laughs> so we don't have enough close games in the last seven. Uh, quickly, uh, an opinion piece from uh, Arnie Stapleton. He says that the Patriots, the downfall of the New England Patriots after Tom Brady lasted just one season. Mike, what do you think? Um, I'm, I, the season's not over yet. And I mean, they're nine and four and there's a seven, it's a 17 game season. So and we didn't have they, that last season and have it last. And, and there's no way they can finish lower than 500. So I mean, yeah, it's it's a winning season. So no matter what, they got a winning season. Um, they got a rookie QB. I think, I think people talking about them being like Super Bowl favorites now. It's a little bit of um, uh, over eager uh, bonerism right there. Like, calm down, guys. Slow down. Take a chill pill. Uh, think about you know baseball cold showers and Margaret Thatcher naked on a cold day. <laughs> um, but I mean, considering the fact that every other rookie QB right now is just sucking hind tit and Max like, yeah, I I got this guy. He's telling me what to do and I'm listening to him and doing it and we're winning and that's all I care about. And so I'm not going to fuck it up by doing anything wrong. So he tells me to do this. I do it. End of story. Let's keep winning. I think I think it's good. I think they're going to probably get... I don't know. It's nine and four. 
they've got three more games left. Bills, Jags, Patriots, Colts. Conceivably, they could win out. Realistically, at, at, at worst, I see him going two and two. So that's eleven and, and eleven and six. That's I mean that's that's almost enough for a first round buy right there. Mm-hmm. I'd say they're ma- they're making the playoffs. Playoffs, playoffs. I just want to win a game. Never mind playoffs. Um, I, I honestly think that they're good. The question is, are they playoff good? I don't know. But the thing is to remember, back in the day, there was a bunch of no names on the Patriots, and they won a Super Bowl. I mean, granted, they had Brady, but still, there was a bunch of no names there. So I think with what they've got, they could do it. And what? if they do do it, Bill is going to be enshrined with the Belichick Trophy, not the Lombardi Trophy. Was it Vinatieri's first season where they won the 2002 Super Bowl? It was definitely Brady's first season, if I remember correctly. I might be, I might be totally wrong on that. I'm just, I'm, I'm, because there was a period of time before Brady was Vinatieri. We were praising <laughs> Vinatieri. Uh, Vinatieri was. Let's see, when did he start? Uh, he started. Oh, he. Oh, Vinatieri started in '96. And, so that was. Um, uh, I believe 96 was when they actually went and played and lost in the Super Bowl to the Packers. And that was Bill Parcells. Uh, you, you, and that uh, was with Bled, though. You know what? I, I, can, I can actually throw some stuff out here from, of all places, history.com. <laughs> history.com. On February 3rd, 2002, the New England Patriots shock football fans everywhere by defeating the heavily favored St. Louis Rams 2017 to take home their first. Super Bowl victory, Pat's kicker, Adam Vinatieri, made a 48-yard field goal to win the game just as the clock expired. Yes, because they were tied, and he kicked a field goal, and they won. And that, correct. And I, I will argue, the greatest Super Bowl halftime performance ever. Wait, that was the Janet Jackson one? <laughs> that was two years later. I was, I was gonna say that was 2004 for the Janet Jackson one. <laughs> no, that <laughs> okay. It depends on who you ask about what the greatest one ever is. Oh, no. was that Prince? No, that was U2. Doing oh, was U2? The, the September oh, 11th is... tribute. Oh, okay. All right. I was gonna say U2 being the greatest ever. I mean, that's subjective, but okay. All right. <laughs> September 11th. All right. Okay. If it was 1987, okay. Yeah. U2. Greatest I'll, I'll, ever. I'll, get, I'll give you that one. Okay. Right. No, that was it was U2 hitting all the right notes figuratively and literally during that performance. Um, Again, depending on who you ask. Uh, anyway, I mean, that, that was like pure, like, you know, we love America. Everybody was together and like seeing that. That was that was emotion. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. You know, <laughs> no, they, no, they knew how to do it. No, nothing better to uh, no one better to do a tribute to America than an Irishman. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> uh, hey, NFC South, number one, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. That that is true. Nine and three. Who wants to start hedging their bets that it will be Pats and Bucks come Super Bowl? Uh, apparently, some people are already putting bets down. I've I've heard that, and I've also heard other people get incredibly angry if such a prospect is brought up. Oh my! Point. Oh my! Oh yeah! People are blowing out their O rings. Oh yeah, they are not. Ha- but like the thing is, if that happens, yeah, there's a bunch of people that hate Brady, and by proxy have always hated the Patriots. But they're going to hate watch. They're so going to hate watch. They're not going to turn away. This isn't like if if the Browns and uh, the Seahawks played the Super Bowl. <laughs> I not my, that either of them are playing the Super yeah, Bowl. Yeah, but I put my money on the Seahawks. Well, yeah, I mean, because always the Browns are going to find some way to screw it up. Um, or like... No, yeah, I'd say the, maybe the Seahawks. I'm trying to think of another. I mean, the I think if if the Lions made it to the Super Bowl, people would be rooting for the Lions, like the underdogs that they always are. But they're never going to make it to the Super Bowl, so I can't even say that in in honesty. But I feel like maybe, yeah, I I feel like the Seahawks are kind of eh. The Cardinals maybe, no one really cares. Like one of those two teams. Okay. If it, you're know, like, the, the most of the country is going to be like, we don't care. We're not going to watch. Seahawks and the Jags. Yeah, it's like, yeah. 
Yeah, exactly. The Jets. Or, or, the, <laughs> uh, or no, I mean, if you don't want to do Seahawks and the Lions. Yeah, exactly. If, yep. if the Lions, yeah, the Lions and the Browns played, you're like, okay. The Lions are doing great. great this season, by the way, uh, one in 10. Hey, look, they, you know what? They, they wiped out their winless season, okay? And literally, they're on a streak now. They've won one. <laughs> <laughs> like what the Browns had. Of, I still love that when the Browns, like they won a single game that season. So they had a parade. Uh, you, you know what? Celebrate what you can. And you know what? It, it, you got to love it, right? You got to live it. Well, we we're talking about hate watching and yes. it's a testament to new England. When you, you have a consecutive seven game streak here okay and then the Patriots fans the Boston fans New England fans whatever are still upset and they're still pissed off even though uh, this is obviously the 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 polar opposite of where we were last year uh and it's 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 a unique New England trait that will never go away to just be angry about everything and it existed in the culture well before the year 2000 it existed and as far back as 1776. Oh yeah, before, exactly. Before 2000, there wasn't anything good about sports in Boston for a while. Now, granted, you had the Celtics kind of win in the 60s and early in the 70s, and they had a little bit of resurgence in the 80s, but all of the 90s, everybody sucked. No one won anything. Everybody was awful. And you just had this idea that no matter what, we're just going to suck for a while. It didn't help that the Red Sox had so many instances where they came very close and that they were in the World Series several and times exactly. before 2004 and so then and you've blew got, it. You've got the Pats starting it. Like, okay, wow, this is what winning feels like. Okay, and then the Red Sox do it, and then the Celtics have at least one, and the Bruins have at least one, but basically it's the, it's the, the Pats and the, and the Red Sox doing it constantly where every single year there's a parade. Right. And at that point, everybody's like, guys, and stop. Well, at least in All right. Yeah. I mean, and so we're like we're 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 enjoying. We're like, yeah, we're we, we're awesome. But everybody everybody still remembers like the days of suckage, and we're like, Ugh, don't get your hopes up. I I feel like the last time we had a really in depth discussion on sports, we talked about a sense of entitlement, especially for anyone born after the year two thousand. Anyone in New England born after year two thousand. Keep in mind we always have a sense of entitlement regardless of anything in Massachusetts. Right. But if you're born after assholes. Yeah. If you're if you're, you know, between the ages of fifteen and twenty years old, then you're you're growing up in an era where the two juggernaut Boston New England teams are and were just constantly winning every championship or almost every championship. So there yeah, there's once you get to a point now, like when Brady leaves and and uh and Gronk leaves and now you have like last season for example going back to this the Stapleton piece with uh the Patriots having just that one bad season post Tom Brady you all of a sudden now it's sort of like a shock for the young people cuz they've never lived to see a New England team that that just like was anything less than stellar yeah, I mean, I, I always like they, they've got the um, the banners and they've got people's got the posters of the banners and you've got from 1903, the Red Sox, it's a, it's a chunk of red at the beginning of the century and you've got some early Bruins and the middle of the century is all green. It's all Celtics. A couple of 70s with the Bruins and there's, you know, Celtics come back in the 70s and 80s and there's nothing. This is dead, dead air. And then it's just blue Patriots, red Red Sox, blue Patriots, red Red Sox you know, the, the eight and 11, but it's, it's literally those, there's one, like you skip one year and you're like, Oh, don't worry. Next year, there's going to be a championship for somewhere. At least with doesn't. Yeah. yeah. Almost 13, 13 championships in 10 in you know, 15 years almost. At least with the Patriots, at least their victories have been consistent enough. Their, their victories and their post victory performance have been consistent enough. Whereas with the Red Sox, it's been they win a season. And you're like, I don't know if this is ever going to happen again. Well, they win. They win the World Series. And then the following season, it's like they never recover from that. Uh, you know, that post nut cloudiness. Hangover. Yeah, it's post nut cloudiness. You have that moment of post nut clarity and then it's cloudiness. And that's bo- both are not supposed to last more 
then like four hours yeah exactly (laughs) otherwise consult the doctor and the red Sox will go an entire season it's like a recovery season they need to suck for a season after winning the world series and then they they have a bounce back and then they they, not for nothing a lot of teams have that in in all all of sports a lot of teams have that post you know championship you know hangover most uh, i mean like most teams aren't like the Red Sox, though, where then they find out that, you know, there was sign stealing and other other controversies. That come oh, up. Alleged, alleged, <laughs> alleged. The footballs okay. were deflated. Yeah, and I love how that everybody's like bitching money with the footballs being deflated. And yet even the Colts players like, yeah, but we still lost 42 to six after the second half. <laughs> when they were properly inflated. <laughs> yeah. And it has nothing to do with uh, the inflated balls. We just sucked. Yeah, let's just discount skill. An ability. Yeah. Uh, really quick, I just want to play audio from a friend of the show, Adam Twelve. He does the midday uh, shift on uh, our former radio station, uh, which is now Rock ninety two nine in Boston. Mm-hmm. Uh, the next generation of classic rock. Uh, here's Twelve talking about uh, how New England f- sports fans are just angry no matter what. I'm following the game last night, and I'm following along with Pat's fans on Twitter and Facebook. And they're filling their diapers. Oh, we're going to lose the game. Oh, this is terrible. The Bills gave you no indication at any point in time that they were going to do anything to win that game. And P.S., your team's won like six Super Bowls in the last 20 years and what, a dozen AFC championships? You've got the greatest coach of all time, yet there's this segment of Patriots fans that it's never good enough and the sky is always falling. And it's, it's sad to watch. You should enjoy something like last night. That's my take. It's never good enough. <laughs> like an Asian parent and their child. Never good <laughs> New England fans, sports fans, impossible to please. Well, Mike, uh, al- we did it. Almost approximately 40 minutes. That's two segments worth of <laughs> sports talk. Uh, wow. Uh, I'll, I'll see you in six months for the next episode. I don't think I can ever, I don't think I can do that ever again. <laughs> uh, you have to send you to the ER to check if you have an aneurysm. <laughs>